All right, today we're talking about solving rational inequalities. Two important traits of a rational function. Let f of x equal g of x over h of x be a rational function where g of x and h of x have no factors in common. And we know f of x has zeros when g of x equals zero, and f of x is undefined when h of x is equal to zero. Note, when solving rational inequalities, we need to identify both the zeros and the undefined values. So solving rational inequalities, make sure the inequality has zero on the other side. Make sure that f of x equals g of x over h of x, that you have a single rational function. Um, set g of x equal to zero and h of x equal to zero to find the values on the sign chart. Make sure to factor if you need to. We're going to create a sign chart with all the values from step three. And we're going to be careful to mark the values where h of x equals 0 so that we never include those values in our solution. Test values um, test values in each interval to see um, if the values are positive or negative. And then we're going to interpret the sign chart to answer the given inequality from the problem. If, f, if the value of f is positive, then f of x is greater than 0 for all numbers of x on that interval. If the value f of f is negative, then f of x is less than zero for all numbers x in that interval. Note, be sure to write your answer in interval notation and think about the endpoints. So this says to solve and express your answers using interval notation. So if I want to solve this, it already has zero on one side. So we want um, to set our equation in the numerator equal to zero. So, and this up here, let me go back up real quick. Um, it says to set g of x equal to 0 and h of x equal to 0, but I always like to set h of x not equal to 0 because it's the denominator we can't have 0. Um, and so then that helps remember that that's going to be an open circle on my graph um, sign chart. So for this one, in my numerator, we have x minus 3 equals 0. And so we know these are going to be the zeros are the x-intercepts of the graph as long as they're not zeros of the denominator, so x equals 3. In my denominator, x plus 2 cannot be equal to 0 because we can't divide by 0, so x cannot be equal to negative 2. So on my number line, I have negative 2, and I'm going to leave that with an open circle, and at 3, I'm going to have a closed circle. And so, again, um, since we can't ever divide by 0, that means, remember, we have a vertical asymptote on our graph at negative 2. We can never have that value, whereas the 3 is an x-intercept, so it's just equal to 0 there. That's why it's a closed circle. So then we want to do our test numbers, just like we did when we did our polynomial inequalities. So I'm going to test in those three different regions. So a number below negative 2, such as negative 3. So when I plug it in, I have negative 3 minus 3 over negative 3 plus 2. And again, I'm just looking at the sign, so that's going to give me negative 6 over negative 1, which is 6, which is positive. And again, normally I don't write all of that out. I would just look at, is it positive or negative? So this would end up being a negative divided by negative, which is positive, so I know this is positive. If I test x equals in between negative 2 and 3, a value would, would be like 0. So I would have 0 minus 3 over 0 plus 2, which gives me negative 3 halves, which is negative. And if I test above 3, such as 4, we would get 4 minus 3 over 4 plus 2. So that gives me 1 over 6, which is positive. And again, we don't need to write out the numbers. We can just write out the signs, which is what I normally do. So for this, we're looking for where our function for f of x is greater than 0. That means where is it, is it positive? So we see we're positive here. And we're positive here. And note, there is no equal sign on this, so this is not equal. So that means we're going to have parentheses around our intervals. So we have from negative infinity to negative 2, parentheses, union, parentheses, 3 to infinity. And again, that's because we know we're equal at 3, but again, we don't want to be equal to 0 because this is just for values that are f of x greater than 0. All right, so let's do the next one. It says, solve and express your answers using interval notation. So for this next one, it already has 0 on the one side. So this one we're doing f of x is greater than or equal to 0. So in this case, we can be equal. So we can use um, brackets where we have our intercepts for the x-axis. So we're setting our numerator values equal to 0 to solve, just the factors. 
we get x equals 1 and x equals negative 2. And then for the denominator, x minus 2 is not equal to 0, so x is not equal to 2. So on our number line, we always want to write our answers in order of the number line. We have negative 2, positive 1, and positive 2. At um, 1 and negative 2, those are closed circles on our number line. And at 2, we have an open circle. And then we're going to pick our test um, values. So when I do my test values, I'm going to test um, x equals negative 3. And this time I'm not going to write out the numbers. I'm just going to look at the signs. So I'm looking at this factored form. Negative 3 minus 1 is a negative number. And negative 3 plus 2 is a negative number, but we're squaring it, so that's positive. And we're dividing it by a negative because negative 3 minus 2 is negative. So we have a negative divided by a negative times a positive. So this is going to end up being positive. So then the next value I'm going to test is x equals um, in between negative 2 and 1. So a number in between negative 2 and 1 would be 0. Um, and let me go ahead and make this a little bit smaller. I have more room to write. Oops. Didn't mean to do that. Make that a little bit smaller. All right. So next we're going to test x equals 0. So um, then I would get 0 minus 1, which is negative. 0 plus 2 squared is positive, and 0 minus 2 is negative. So again, I have a negative divided by negative. That's going to give me a positive answer. And the next one I'm going to test is in between 1 and 2. So x equals 1.5. Um, so if I plug in 1.5, 1.5 minus 1 is a positive number. 1.5 plus 2 is a positive number because you're squaring it. And 1.5 minus 2 is negative. So this gives us a negative answer. And the last one that I'm going to test, um, sorry, is x equals, let's do um, 3. So then that would be 3 minus 1 is positive, 3 plus 2 is positive, and 3 minus 2 is positive, so this gives us positive values. So then for this, we're going to go ahead and um, look at where we are greater than or equal to 0, so we want those positive values. So that would be from here and here on our um, line, so then we got um, negative infinity to 1 bracket union, and then parentheses, because this is a vertical asymptote, remember, so we can't include that. Um, so then parentheses 2 to infinity. So you just have to be careful to remember that where your vertical asymptotes are at, it's not an intercept, so we can't include that. That's why we're doing the open circle on our number line. So looking at number 3, we're going to do the same thing. So for this question here, we have, again, f of x is greater than or equal to 0. So for this problem, first you would want to factor the equation. So if I factor this, we want factors of negative 10 to add up to 3. So this would give me um, x minus 5 times x plus 2 over, and I'm going to write this in standard form, negative x plus 1. Um, and so for this one, we have greater than or equal to 0, and we're going to solve our numerator um, zeros. So I get um, x minus 5 equals 0, so x equals 5. x plus 2 equals 0, so x equals negative 2. And for the denominator, negative x plus 1 cannot equal 0. So negative x cannot equal negative 1, so x cannot equal 1. So that means on our number line for that one, we're going to have, and I'm going to do number line on this side over here. Um, so this number line, we would have negative 2 with a closed circle and 1 with an open circle, because that's going to be a vertical asymptote, and then at 5 with a closed circle, because that's an x-intercept. So let's go ahead and think about our signs then. So let's do our test numbers. So when we test, let's first do um, x equals negative 3. So again, we're looking at our signs. I'm going to use my factored form. So negative 3 minus 5 is negative, negative 3 plus 2 is negative, and negative negative 3 becomes positive plus 1 is positive. 
So that's going to give us negative times negative is positive divided by positive is a positive answer. Um, so those are going to be positive numbers. And then if I do in between negative 2 and 1, 0. So then we have 0 minus 5, which is negative. 0 plus 2 is positive, And 0 negative plus 1 is positive. So this is going to give us negative answers here. And then if I do x equals in between um, 1 and 5 would be 2. So 2 minus 5 is negative, 2 plus 2 is positive, and negative 2 plus 1 is negative. So this is going to give us positive answers because you have a negative divided by a negative. And then the next one is above 5. So x equals, let's do 6. So then 6 minus 5 is positive, 6 plus 2 is positive, and negative 6 minus, negative 6, excuse me, plus 1 would be uh, negative. So this gives us negative answers. So we're looking for where we're greater than or equal to 0. So that would be here and here. And so then our solution would be negative infinity to negative 2, bracket, union, um, parentheses, because remember, at 1, that's a vertical asymptote. So that would be 1, 2, 5, bracket. Because at 2, negative, and 5, those are intercepts, and they're equal to 0 there. And again, the 0 of our denominator was 1. So again, we don't include that. All right, looking at the next problem, number 4. Um, so we don't have anything, no, or excuse me, we don't have any x's in our numerator here. It's already in factored form. So we don't say 1 equals 0, right? That's not true. So we don't have any x-intercepts on this graph. So no x-intercepts. So when we set the denominator not equal to 0, x minus 1. And, you, and again, you could do squared if you want not equal to 0 because what just happens is you're squaring the 0, so it gets rid of it. So x minus 1 not equal to 0, or excuse me, not squaring. You're taking the square root of 0, which is just 0. Um, x not equal to 1. So on my number line, I have just one value at 1 where it is an open circle because we're going to have a vertical asymptote on our graph there. Um, so that means it's undefined. So we're just doing our test numbers. So let's test um, x equals 0, which would be to the left of 1. So that would give us 1 is positive in the numerator over 0 minus 1 squared, which is positive. So this ends up giving us positive answers on this side. Um, and then the other side for this problem here, we would get x equals, um, let's do 2. So that would give us a positive number over 2 minus 1 um, is positive, and then we're squaring it, so it's also positive. So in this case, um, this one's a kind of a special case here. You notice that what happens is that our graph is um, looks like it's all positive. So that means in this case, there are no solutions because it's never going to be less than or equal to zero. So no solutions. Um, looking at question number five. Notice this one's not set equal to zero. So the first thing I want to do is want to set equal to zero. And I can either take the two to the left side or I can take this um, rational function to the other side. It doesn't really matter. So I'm going to subtract the two to the other side. So x plus one over x minus three minus two um, is less than or equal to zero. Now, when you're doing problems like this, um, you need to make it this all one fraction. So you need to get a common denominator. So remember that this is really over one. So that means to get a common denominator, I need to multiply this by x minus 3 over x minus 3. So when I do that, I get um, x plus 1, um, excuse me, I put 2, x plus 1, and then over x minus 3, and this becomes, and I like to distribute that negative, so I'm going to make this positive and put a negative 2 there. So this would be plus negative 2x plus 6 over x minus 3. Once you have a common denominator, then you can combine your numerator over your common denominator, which we learned how to um, add and subtract and multiply and divide rational functions last year. So we get negative 2x plus x, which is negative x, and 1 plus 6 gives me plus 7 over x minus 3 is less than or equal to 0. So for this one, my numerator, we get negative x plus 7 equals 0 because it's in the numerator. We can be equal to 0. So negative x is equal to negative 7, so x equals 7. And then in our denominator, x minus 3 cannot be equal to 0. 
So x cannot be equal to 3. So that would be a vertical asymptote on the graph. Just move that over. And so when we do our number line, we have um, 7 and 3. So 7 is equal to a closed circle and 3 is an open circle because that's our vertical asymptote of our graph. And when we do our test numbers, x equals, and you know what, I didn't realize I need to put this in the order of a number line. So the 3 is an open circle and 7 is to the right, which would be a closed circle. Sorry about that. Um, and so then below 3 would be um, like 0. So we're going to use um, this form right here to test our values. So 0, negative, plus 7 is positive, and 0 minus 3 is negative. So this is going to give us negative answers. And then x equals in between 3 and 7 would be 4. So negative 4 plus 7 is positive. Negative, or excuse me, 4 minus 3 is positive as well. So these are positive. And then um, we have x equals, um, let's do 8. So if we do 8, then we would get negative um, 8 plus 7 is negative, and 8 minus 3 is positive, so this ends up being negative. So for this one, we're looking for when f of x is less than or equal to 0. So we have less than 0 here and here. So negative infinity to 3, parenthesis, because that's our vertical asymptote, union bracket 7 to infinity. And that would be my solution. So I wanted to go ahead and, and show you this one um, graphically as well. So if I plug in the original problem, x plus 1, and then divide by x minus 3, notice I put that in parentheses in 2. Um, so if I want to graph this, first of all, I'd make sure my stat plots are turned off. And then I like to hit zoom 6 for a standard window. And I'm going to um, just actually change my window slightly. I'm going to go to, uh, let's do 15. So this line right here, this horizontal line, is y equals 2. And so we're looking for when this function is less than or equal to 2. So just to show you how it works, you can see the vertical asymptote right here is at 1, 2, 3. And you can confirm that by doing second graph and looking at the table. So second window, I need to change my table start to 1. Second graph goes to the table. And you can see that there's an error at 3. Um, so that's where we know our vertical asymptote is. And so again, if I go back to my graph, I can see, well, we're looking for values less than or equal to 2. So just to show you, notice that from negative infinity to 3, where a vertical asymptote is, we're below 2. And then if I do second trace value and hit 7, enter, notice that's where the intersection is right here um, between 2 and this um, function. And so notice that that's where at 7 to infinity, it's below. So if I change my window some more, let's do maybe 30 here. And go to my graph. Oops. You can see it's below 2 there from bracket 7 to infinity. So I just wanted to show you how that works. And it's you're doing the same thing when you're, um, again, setting this equal to 0, but then it's just easier to test your values when you're looking at them um, to do with a sign line test. So that, that's why we always like to do that. And you could even, um, again, clear that out. And watch if you do minus 2 here and hit graph, then you'll see, again, you still have your vertical asymptote, and that 0 is hitting here at 7. So second trace um, value, and then 7. So again, it just confirms our solution. So where are we below 0 from, again, negative infinity to 3, and then bracket 7 to infinity. So again, just another way of thinking about the problem. But if you don't have a calculator, you need to be able to do that with using your sign line chart to help. All right, so um, here we have the graph of a rational function f as shown below. Use the graph to solve the inequalities below. So the first one says f of x is less than 0. So if we have f of x is less than 0, that would be here and here on my graph. It's kind of hard to see that. So that would be from parentheses negative 3 to the, um, and it's equal to, so we can say negative 1 bracket 
union, and then we're equal to 2 because it's an intercept, so brackets 2, so that's where we get 0 for a y value, so 2, 2 looks like 3 because that's a vertical asymptote at 3. So that would be the intervals where we are negative. Um, the next one is for positive values. So for positive, that would be here and here. So the intervals for this would be negative infinity to negative 3, what that vertical asymptote is, parenthesis, because we don't include the vertical asymptote, union. And then this is not equal, so we're not including the zeros either, or the x-intercept, I should say. So parenthesis, negative 1 to 2, parenthesis, union, and then 3 to infinity. So that would be my notation. And where f of x is greater than or equal to 1. So it looks like we have an asymptote right here. So that's at y equals 1. So anything above that line, which is here and here, is going to be my answer. So um, from negative infinity to negative 3, parenthesis, union, parenthesis, negative 3 to infinity would be my answer. And that is it for the notes for today.